The third question is to find the local extrema using the first derived U test. It is from the lesson 4.4. Here they have asked us to find a lot of things. First, we need to find the extrema, then increasing, decreasing, and also sketching graph. So let's do each of these part by part. If you are to find the absolute maxima minima, we have used the direct shortcut method in calculator for the question number two, the previous one. We can use the same thing. Increasing and decreasing function also can be done by the mode 7 method. And if it is sketching graph, you will have four options of graph. Easily you can figure out using calculator and the given equation, which is the correct graph. I won't go into the detailed method since it's the electronic part. But for one problem, I'll just show you how it is done. First, we find the derivative. First derivative, it will be 3x power 2 minus... 3. And then what we do over here is we are to find the critical number making this equal to 0. And I'll take 3 common out, x squared minus 1. So x is equal to plus or minus 1. This is the critical numbers here. From the critical numbers, we can easily find where it's increasing and decreasing. So what we do is we take the critical numbers, minus 1 and positive 1 over here, and choose a test value. So test value is anything less than minus 1, it's minus 2. Anything between 1 and uh, minus 1 is 0 and over here 2. So what you do is you put these test values in the first derivative, the first derivative. This is y dash of x. So here, if you substitute minus 2, it'll be, I'm just going to do in mind quickly, minus 2 square 4, 4 times 3, it'll be a positive value. We're not interested in the exact value. We are just interested whether it's positive or negative. Here it's positive. When you put 0, this is 0. It's negative. And again, when you put 2, it'll be positive. So it's increasing, decreasing, and increasing. That is what they wanted. And over here, we can see this will be the maximum local maxima and local minima over here at minus uh, positive 1. So you can get this information from this first derivative test and over here. And if you want to graph, you can do again concavity and all that. But there are easier methods to figure out which is the graph. Now in the calculator, what do we get? Here using the mode 7 and typing in the given equation, that is x to the power 3 minus 3x squared plus 2. So it's just 3x, my bad. Away it's just 3x. And if you put this in the calculator, press equal to, there's no second equation. Let us start, see over here there is no intervals. So let us start at say minus 5 and end at 5. And it would be really nice if we give a step of 0.5. Okay, now it's insufficient memory because there are too many values. So we can, you can, you know, you can um, maneuver these. I mean, you can manipulate these values from minus 5 to 0 and then so on. But I'll leave this start and end and let me give step of 1. Now you can get the values. Here, what I'm interested in is where it's increasing and where it's decreasing. See here, it's it's decreasing, right? Sorry, it's increasing, right? It's negative numbers. It's becoming bigger and bigger. And it goes to 0. It keeps on increasing. But after minus 1, look at this minus 1. It reaches forward, but then it drops. It's decreasing. So you can, you can follow this as well. It was increasing. It reached minus 1, peaked up over here at the value of 4, and then it's decreased. See, at 0, 2. And then it reached until 1, that was 0, but then again 2 is again increased. So you can see it was decreasing until 1, and then it's increased. So you can figure out this increasing, decreasing, uh, where, wherever the function is increasing and decreasing from the calculator as well. Or you can do the first derivative test and find it. Now what if the graphs are known? Now, if the graph is given to you, you will have four separate graphs and you need to choose the correct graph, isn't it? So you can easily figure out by making this table. Of course, by making the table, you can see if it's at minus two, what should be the value? It should be zero, yes. If it's at minus one, it should be at four and that is four. And at zero, it should be at two. And you can easily understand the graph. 
But there's another easy way. You can just put this given equation directly in the calculator in the computation mode. And over here we have minus 3x plus 2. And then choose any x value. See over here I'll just calculate at minus 2. So what this gives me is at minus 2 it should be 0. I will look into all the other graphs as well, other options. And if it is not giving a value of 0, it's not touching the x-axis, then that's the wrong graph. And then if there are two graphs at the same point at minus 2, it's 0. Then try some other point as well. Let's try 0 over here. Let's calculate at x value of 0. It should be, it's 20, so it should be 4, 8, 12, 16, 20. So half of 4 is 2. Yes, absolutely, it is true. Whereas all the other graphs can be eliminated. So this is how we can easily figure out which is the correct graph. Now here they have clearly asked we how to graph them. So all these problems, what you need to do is you just have to put in the equation plus 2x squared and then we have plus 1. So put in the equation and look into all the four graphs and calculate different x values. So I'll calculate at 0, it must be 1. And you can see that's 1. What about minus 1? It should be around 2. So calculate at minus 1. It's yes, 2. What about minus 1.5? Calculate at minus 1.5. It is 2.21. Is it true? Minus 1.5. Yeah, it's approximately true. So this is how we can easily eliminate the other options. Within two or three values, you'll definitely get the correct graph. Whereas we know how to find the increasing and decreasing just by mode 7, which we have done thoroughly in the question 2. So please go back to the question 2 if you want to know how to find the increasing and decreasing. It's just by mode 7 and table. Now here as well, we can just look into the graph and we can look into the equation. Type out this equation. It is alpha x to the power 4 minus 8x squared. Even over here, you can do the table, but this is easier because you will have four graphs. You know, say minus 2 is different for all the graphs. So I'll just choose calculate at minus 2. And over here, we are getting negative 15. All the other graphs are different, so you can easily eliminate that point, the other graphs and choose this as the correct answer. So that's the thing. And all these problems are just similar. You can go through them by yourselves. Whenever you are to find graphs, it's very, very simple and easy. Now, this one as well, it's it's just that choose some points. Now, whenever you see to the power two-thirds, you can understand there's a cusp over here, you know, sharp edge. Whereas, also looking at the other graphs, this is a cubic graph. Yes, this is a cubic graph. Let's see some others. Over here, it's 1 by thirds. So over here, this is um, like this shaped. Whereas if it's sine and cosine, it should be something like this, like waves, isn't it? So you can figure out from the options as well, which is more likely the correct graph. But if there are similar graphs like this, then you need to use your calculator and get the accurate one. Sine squared is just going to be long amplitudes. And here it's exponential. So since it's x squared, then parabola is also there, and then it's exponential as well. And lastly, natural logarithm over here, this is undefined at zero. So it'll go close and asymptote is at zero. So this would be the answer. So this is how we can easily figure out the correct graphs. Just use your calculator and you can get the correct graphs. That is the end of this question. I hope it is clear. If you have any doubts, please consider re-watching the video or posting your doubts in the comments. I hope you all will head on to the next video.